Hi guys, welcome back. Ivan here, and if you're new here, my name is Ivan. I am Malaysian born Chinese, and I live in Los Angeles. I go by he, him, his pronouns, and welcome to my channel. I want to say also, no matter what your sexual orientation is, what your gender, skin tone, wherever you come from, and what you believe in, you are welcome here, and this is a safe space. Today, I just want to kind of like play with skincare on camera and also answer a little bit of a questions since it is Pride Month next month about identity, finding myself, and kind of like feeling confident and how I take care of myself as a queer, effeminate Asian man. I think for the longest time, even that was quite difficult for me to even say just because, I don't know, there was a lot of internalized hate for myself growing up, but I'm a, I will dive into that. So I'm gonna start out with skincare. I actually already cleansed my face and I use this Youth to the People Kale Plus Green Tea Spinach Vitamin Superfood Cleanser. I just call it Youth to the People Superfood Cleanser. I have a full size one that I already finished and this is a child size, like a mini, that comes in the Youth to the People Pride Kit right here. It comes in a bag like this and the bag you can write your own pronouns or your name or whatever you identify as right here so what is in the kit is this super fruit cleanser it comes in one ounce and it is a gel cleanser with a bunch of antioxidant non-irritating plant antioxidant extracts and also vitamin c and e and it also comes with this yerba mate resurfacing energy facial which i'm going to use today and this one is kind of like an exfoliating facial. It contains caffeine to help depuff the skin. And also this Super Berry Hydrate plus Glow Dream Mask. And this one contains squalene and hyaluronic acid and also a very stable form of vitamin C. It's really up to you which one you want to use, but they are all in the Pride Kit from Youth to the People, which I will be talking about. So I already went ahead and cleansed my face with this. It's a very nice gel cleanser. I think it's suitable for all skin types honestly because it's just such a beautiful formulation it's amazing i'm actually going to use this mask right now the yerba mate specifically energy mask i just wanted to get ready and sit down and chat and just answer some questions this one contains caffeine which um it's gonna help i don't have a mirror oh no where's my mirror i'll grab one real quick and it contains like small little diet tenacious earth and bamboo to also Kind of resurface the skin. It's very, very gentle. It's not like giant granules that cut the skin. And it also contains pineapple and papaya enzymes that help, you know, dissolve any dead skin when you wash off. I actually don't scrub it into my face. I kind of just apply it and then remove it as I wash. I feel like that's enough exfoliation for me, except around the nose, I go like. So for the Youth to the People Pride Kit, 100% of the donations go to an organization called GLSEN, which it's an amazing organization which helps create safe, inclusive school environments for LGBTQ plus students, which is amazing. I think we all need a safe space. And since 100% of the profits go towards GLSEN to support safe and inclusive spaces for LGBTQ plus kids, I really hope you will support it and it's a great way to try skincare and also treat yourself and also give back. But I have a couple of questions that I really wanted to talk about and answer with you guys and a little bit of background about me. I am a 20 year old man. I identify as a man. It's been a journey, you know, like self love. And coming from a Malaysian family, that hasn't always been easier for me, but I think a lot of self reflection was needed and also definitely a lot of representation helped with me coming to terms of who I am now and I'm still figuring it out like I don't have all the answers and some days are more difficult than others when it comes to self-love and self-acceptance but slowly I, I think I've been getting there just by being with myself in this social distancing and I live alone I have a cat so it's usually just me and my cat the first question that I want to answer was what has helped you own your identity? And I think honestly that is a very complex question. Identity is so so different for everyone and everyone has their own idea of what they want to come across as I feel. For me, it's a lot, like I said, a lot of self-reflection and thinking about what I really want to do versus what society expects of somebody like me, I guess. Even painting my nails, I think sometimes is very jarring to 
a lot of my older Asian relatives or family or even people that I meet on the street, you know? And um, getting pierced ears is not something that I would say growing up I would be okay with. And slowly, I've learned that a lot of that was my social conditioning when I really wanted to do it. Even wearing makeup, you know? Wearing makeup. Sometimes I feel like I shouldn't wear makeup because it will make other people uncomfortable. But I've learned that your own happiness and joy is more important than somebody's discomfort. Especially if you're not hurting anybody. You're just expressing yourself, right? For me, when I grew up, I saw a lot of straightness and whiteness in the media. Like that kind of perfect family, you know, Disney. A lot back then. I think they're getting better now. But yeah, a lot of the shows and cartoons we watch were definitely centered around having like a perfect family and I'm glad that things are changing now and that definitely helps with my accepting and loving my own identity which is why representation in the media it's not just a word I like throw around it's not just that you know it's not just putting Asian black brown faces it's actually having them behind the scenes and crafting the stories and telling their stories so I'm really happy about that I think in recent times there's a lot of shows that are very, very inspiring to me like Pose, the half of it, Queer Eye so yeah, I'm really thankful for that. And I really wish that I had that growing up. But right now, I can't kind of wish that. What I can do is going forward, give myself the love that I need and the validation that I need to myself and not looking for it in like a TV show or some of my Asian relatives or my friends, you know? I have to find it within. And reflecting and journaling has really, really helped with that. I used to also be ashamed of just being Asian in America. I've always tried to tone down my Asian-ness or my gayness so that I don't make people uncomfortable. But these days, I think I'm kind of leaning more into it and learning to accept my entire wholeness. And people that love you, honestly, will stay for that. And if people don't accept you for that, then it's okay for them to leave your life because you'll be happier that way as your most authentic self. One other thing that has helped me own my identity is definitely learning my history. History is so, so important because if you don't know your history, then you're gonna be bound to repeat it and you don't know what privileges you have today was because of the pioneers and the people that fought for your rights and your freedom. I think a poem by Maya Angelou sums it up the most for me. It is titled Our Grandmothers and one of the lines in the poem is I come as one but I stand as 10,000 and that, that just resonates so much to me when I enter a space. It's like, well I enter as one but there were 10,000 people that came before me that made this possible for me. So I think learning history is very, very important. And this privilege that I have, sitting here, talking to you, expressing myself fully, is a privilege that I don't take for granted. I take very seriously and I love it. And I'm very thankful for it. And so going forward, knowing that I want to embrace all of me because the people before me maybe couldn't have, you know? And I hope the future generations from me are able to do that. How do I practice self-love? What I do now these days is honoring my body. That's the most basic thing I can do. Honoring my body and then my mind, right? So my body is my vessel that carries all of my thoughts, emotions, ideas, my soul. So I eat when I'm hungry. I sleep when I need to. I drink water when I want to, I pee when I need to, I know that sounds weird. And I just honor my body and what it needs. I try to eat good food, I try, try. I do my skincare because it's just a time for me to reflect and take care of myself for, you know, for carrying me, carrying me all these years. I think growing up as a queer Asian boy, seeing a lot of very masculine images in the media has always made me hate my body. Like, it's small nuances of I wish I was fitter, I wish I was skinnier, I wish I was taller, I wish I had bigger arms, I wish I had longer legs, I wish I, you know, I had like more symmetrical abs, I wish I had no body hair, like just things like that. These days, because of social isolation, I've been just looking into the mirror, accepting it and smiling. That's me. This is me. And I'm going to accept and love you because my body has helped me with so much. My body has carried me through so much. My body has been with me with so much. So I've been looking to my body as self-care and treating it like I would treat a best friend because 
I would give so much for my best friends. I would give so much for my friends. And why can't I do that for myself? So that's to me is self-care and self-love. Okay, I'm gonna go wash this mask off and it's kind of like dry now. It's like 10 minutes and I'll be right back. All right, now that my skin is done in masks, it looks just so bright. And this is my skin with no makeup. I just, I really love this mask. On days when I'm more congested, I will go with a resurfacing facial, but then on days when I feel very, very dry and dull, I will go with the dream mask. It really just depends. I think they're just both great masks in general. You can use, also use this as a sleeping mask at nighttime. That's what I do. And the aesthetic for you to the people, immaculate the flavor. I'm gonna go in with a fundamental eye awakening gel just to you know, brighten out my eyes and eye gel just to condition and give my eyes a little massage. I've been playing a lot of games at night and that's like part of my self-care too like just enjoying things without having like a return like making my candles, doing my paintings, writing my poetry, doing things without Having a productive return to me is also self-care. I think we're so caught up in the productivity culture that sometimes it's difficult to just enjoy ourselves. But this social distancing quarantine has taught me to sit still and rest is productive because you're not a machine. You are a human being. You're a living human being. And cats sleep when they want to and dogs sleep when they want to. And that's why they're, they're happy, they're healthy. They don't worry about the future as much you know you need to rest like you're human you need to rest when you need to because it catches up to you for sure like your body takes takes note so i'm gonna use this lip oil or so from jamisha today i'm just gonna do a condition my lips i just like it because it gives my lips some, some kind of tint and also nourishes it this is from misha for serum i'm gonna go with this inky list 15 percent Vitamin C and EGF serum. I really like it. It's like brighten up, up the skin and also it's super affordable. The next question is, what is the importance of community? Well, community to me is very important and it could be in any way you view it. It could be like online groups. It could be your family, your friends, maybe the, your workspace, maybe even like some chat rooms online. But to me, community is my friends and also you guys that are watching. I mean, I definitely started this channel not thinking that it was like, oh, a community of people, but I just like love sharing what I loved. And over time, I feel like the more I shared about my art, my makeup, my artistry, and my vulnerabilities, I think you guys are a big part of my community. I'm really thankful for that. And I think for me, like I've never had a safe space growing up not at home, not at my work, um, not in the school. So I think when I go back to look at my old videos and my old photos, like this is what I wanted, like a safe space to truly be seen, be appreciated, be loved. And I really feel that with you guys, with your comments, like if you look at all my photos and my videos, like y'all are so sweet, like the sweetest and the most pure, wholesome um, like place. And I really want my my videos to be a space where you can escape from maybe you, your living situation isn't that good or school isn't that amazing or work is not great but at the end of the day community to me is a support system that loves you and can see you for who you are and appreciate you because I think what all of us want in this world is just to be seen and be loved and be appreciated for our most authentic, happy, gay selves, right? So I'm really thankful for this community and I think it's very important because we have to have community to continue uplifting others, especially if you're queer, especially, especially if you're a queer person of color. And I hope this is, this is, this is it for you. Um, okay, I'm gonna go in with some sunscreen now. Uh, the next question is advice for your younger self Honestly, I would just tell younger Ivan to chill out <laughs> I guess I don't know. I grew up with a very 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 high expectation for myself 
And I think that's cultural. And I think when you are an immigrant or a person of color, and especially if you are like a queer immigrant person of color in the world, I think you do have to kind of constantly be thinking about proving yourself, that you're worthy, achieving so that it kind of hides the shame of being Asian or being gay. That was a lot of what I dealt with growing up. Like there was a lot of pressure on me, I feel like, because my parents had sent me here. They had paid so much money for me to be in school. I just really wanted to take care of everyone, take care of them without really taking care of myself and focusing on myself. So I would really tell young Ivan to take it slow one day at a time. Actually take time to reflect and think about what you really want versus just go, go, go. I would tell him that life isn't perfect and it might be hard at some points in life, but it does get better because I have so much to live for. I have so much love to give. I would tell future Ivan that he's more than the money he makes, the degree he didn't have, or the, the shitty relationships that's he's been in, I would tell younger Ivan that he's loved by so much, so many, and he is enough and worthy of everything good in the world. Yeah, and I would tell him to just take his time with figuring things out because I felt like I was just hurled into adulthood because I had to make ends meet, I had to uh, pay rent, go to school. I would tell younger Ivan to have fun through all of it and embrace who he really is inside. And that's why I think we need so much more representation and role models and people <laughs> championing so that young Ivans in the world, like anybody watching, are able to express themselves fully without feeling bad about who they are. Yeah, but I'm really thankful. I think we've definitely come a long way and definitely there's a lot more work to do and a lot more things that we have to say. But all in all, I am very hopeful for the future because there's you guys and so many allies, all my friends, all your allies that are constantly championing for us, all the parents, all the mothers, all the teachers out there that are helping. It's not unnoticed. And that's all what we need in the world, just love. More love, more happiness. That's it. To put an end to this video, I'm applying more sunscreen because I think I just cried it all off. More sunscreen daily. Don't forget, guys, I, even though I'm at home, I'm still working around windows, like large windows, so I definitely protect my skin. Yeah, skincare is self-care, y'all. And not in the way that, oh my god, you have perfect skin, you must blah blah blah. No, it's a time for you to, for me at least, to just scale it all back, look at myself in the mirror, and like kind of just be meditative and touch my face, and just realize like, wait, I'm a living thing. Like I need, I have needs. I need to take care of this, you know, I need to eat, sleep, drink, everything. So yeah, it's really important. And I hope, you know, if not skincare, then something else is your routine of just taking a step back to realize that we just, we're all just trying to survive here, trying to live, trying to be happy, trying to be accepted. So yeah. Don't forget to check out Used to People's Pride Kit. I'm really, really thankful they worked with me for this video and it's such a great cause. So please support it if you can. I will see you guys in my next video. I hope this video helped and if you have any other questions i want to do more of these q a's because uh yeah there's a lot of things i want to say so i really hope that you leave them down below questions i'll try to answer them in the comment section or the next video all right guys i know that pride in new york is cancelled this year but pride can never be cancelled because pride is a feeling pride is a community pride is pride is you and you can never be canceled, your spirit. I love you guys so much. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.